Hey guys, it's Tamara Bennett with Southern Adornments Decor. We are going to be doing something a little different today. We're gonna to be showing you some hand lettering with um, both round tip and filbert tip paintbrushes. So let's get started. I am gonna be using two different sets of brushes. I'm gonna be using these, which are the purple uh, round tip brushes that you see in my shop. They come in 12 different sizes. And um, the reason you need, like, if you're gonna be doing lots of hand lettering or things like that, the reason you might want 12 different sizes, let me pull all the little plastic caps off of these. The reason you may want 12 different sizes is because you're gonna be doing different sizes of lettering the long, like on different kinds of projects. So you might not always use the same exact brush on every single project. So let me pull all of these out. These are all brand new. And then the other set that I'm gonna be using, I don't have in the shop right now because they're actually sold out. It's these white filbert tip brushes. Have you guys seen these in the shop before? They have, are actually sold out. They're our most popular brush style. And um, I'm expecting a new shipment of these to come in very soon. So as soon as they are available, we will let you guys know. But these are currently not available. They come in like 12 different sizes. As you can see, they are well loved and, well, maybe not loved. They're worn out because they are well used. So, all right, I'm gonna actually start by doing a background color on this canvas so we're not looking at a boring blank white canvas. This is not a canvas, this is actually, let me show you guys. It is mixed media paper. If you need some of this, I have it in my Amazon affiliate shop. The first color, uh, the colors that I'm using for my background are Deco Art Americana paint colors. They are all acrylic matte paints. I've got foliage green, festive green, and light avocado. I'm gonna do like an ombre kind of look. So this is just gonna be our background. Then we're gonna get started with our lettering. We're just gonna put this on there as quickly as possible. This is not gonna be like something we're hanging up on the wall. This is just a teaching moment. So um, my paint's a little bit thick and the, pa the paper is um, soaking it up. So I'm adding just a little bit of water to thin my paint out so it'll go further. And we're just gonna cover this with this. This color is the foliage green. It's the lightest green. Now let's add some of the festive green. Let me add a little water to it as well. Okay, this is a really bright green. As you guys know, green is like my favorite color in the rainbow. So I love painting with green. Bring it on down a little bit, and then we're gonna blend it into this foliage green color. I'm gonna dip in a little bit of both of them and kind of blend those two colors together right there. Get some more foliage green. And keep your brush strokes kind of going all the same direction. This is just gonna be a fun background color for our hand lettering. This mixed media paper allows you to paint right on top of it and kind of practice so that you're not wasting um, canvases or wood and you can kind of like develop your skills. So that's why I'm using it today instead of painting on an actual door hanger. Okay, and then this last color is light avocado. It's a darker green, more like a grass green. It's not as pretty on its own, but I think it's gonna look cool once we get it kind of blended in with the other greens. Let me get a little bit more of this foliage green and just start blending them together as I bring it up. This could easily be like a grassy scene. Get some more of this, the festive green. I think I called it foliage green a minute ago. It's actually, this brighter green is festive green and we're gonna blend it on down into this color. Okay, we're not gonna waste a whole lot of time um, getting this background perfect because this is just so that we're not staring at a, uh, a white canvas. I wanted kind of a background color. So let me dry this real quick. Okay, so as you guys know, today's kind of, or not today, but this week's theme on our page here is all about hand lettering and choosing the right color kind of brush. So the two main types of brushes that I use for hand lettering are round tip 
and filbert tip. And if you have no clue what the difference between the two is, let me show you. I'm gonna pick out the largest one of each size, or of each type, so that you can see the difference. This pointed tip, the purple one, is your round tip. See how it's kind of rounded and it goes up to a point. The wider one here is called a filbert tip. And it's filbert because it's kind of flat, but it also has a rounded edge. Now let's compare this one to a flat tip brush. This one over here is considered flat tip. See how the tips of it are nice and flat? They don't have that rounded edge. So these two right here are the type that I prefer to use for lettering. Now I don't usually use these really large ones because um, on door hangers, a lot of times I don't want my lettering to be this big. Because if you use this brush and you push down on the bristles, that um, letter is gonna be about a little over a half inch wide for each section of the letter and you're, you're gonna have huge lettering. So if you're working on like a sign for a yard sale, this would be the perfect brush. But if you're working on a door hanger, it's probably a little too big. Okay, so let's just do um, like Merry Christmas or something like that and kind of demonstrate, or actually that's probably too, I don't know, that's probably too long to fit on here with two different styles of lettering. So first of all, you could practice it by writing it out with chalk. We could write, um, we could, let's see. Okay, so for instance, I'm trying to gather my thoughts here. I usually use the round tip brushes when I'm doing um, script lettering. And I usually use the filbert tip brushes if I'm doing cute lettering. Does that make sense? Script lettering, like cursive. Cutesy lettering, like just print or um, something whimsical, I usually use the filbert tip brushes. So let's start with a little bit of script lettering using the round tip brushes. And we'll just write like Merry Christmas up here. I'm gonna write it out in chalk first because that allows me to like change my mind if I don't like the way my letters look. So I, oh, I know what we can do. We can actually do the words Merry Christmas by changing it up on here. So we could do Merry in script and we could do Christmas in a print. So let's just do Christmas, just in a cute little standard print. And you could, it doesn't have to be too standard. You could make your T like longer or your M could go higher if you wanted it to look just a little bit more whimsical. So write it out and then you can choose if you want serifs. Serifs go on the edges of your letters like this. You can add that if you like, if you want just a little bit something else. There we go. And then up here we've got Mary. So let's do the Mary first since it's up at the top and I don't wanna get my hand in the paint. Um, we are going to use our round tip brush. Let me look at the different sizes. So these are all the sizes that come in the pack. There's 12 of them, you can get them in my shop. Um, they're called purple round tip brushes. We don't wanna use the largest one because obviously that would make for some very fat lettering. So let's take out the biggest ones and that will eliminate some of our choices. Okay, so now we're down to these eight. Let's see, these still look a little too large. So anything kind of in this range would probably be good, but I'm thinking even this size six and five are probably a little wide to look dainty. I want my letters to look just a little bit thinner and more dainty. So I'm gonna take out the five and the six, and then we've got one through four here. Now, I always recommend that you start out skinnier and work your way up to a fatter brush. So if you wanted to start with this size one and then work your way up, you could decide to switch brushes midway through your lettering if you feel like it's too, um, it's too thin, okay. I'm gonna recommend that we water down our white paint just a little bit. I'm just gonna do a few drops of white of water in there. Um, something about when you do hand lettering, if you've got your paint thinned just a little bit, it goes a little smoother. Little tip there. All right, so we've got our slightly watered down black, and this is the size one, the smallest round tip brush. Um, now, when I took them out of the packaging, the bristles were kind of stiff, so you're going to want to like loosen them up with your fingertips just at first, and then you're going to just stroke up with your brush, and I'm using a light hand. I'm not pushing down very hard at all. 
Now on the downstroke, this is the tip and the thing that you've got to really practice with a round tip brush, and it's great that we're practicing on paper here. Um, on a downstroke, like I'm fixing to go down on this letter M, you're going to kind of flatten that brush out. See how I'm smashing it down and flattening it out a little bit? Now it didn't come out perfect, so I'm gonna re-dip in the water, or in the paint, and do the same stroke again. So that makes for a thicker stroke going down. Now let's go back up, a nice light hand, and you can always smooth it out if you need to. And then I'm gonna push down and flatten it out a little bit for that downstroke. You can even go back over it again and fatten it up even more by widening out the stroke if you want it to look thicker. Nice thin upstroke. and then a thicker downstroke. Now see how right there, when I came down, I gently lifted up and kind of flicked the brush upward to go toward the E. Now on this E, I got my E a little close to the M. So I'm gonna make sure when I do the downstroke to kind of go toward the inside of the E so that it doesn't bump into the M. I hope I'm explaining all this in a way that makes sense. And then um, this part here that just curves around is just gonna be a thinner stroke. And then this stroke on the R is nice and thin going up. Okay, so then for this little down stroke, we're gonna push down, lift up, dip, our, you noticed I stopped and dipped in the, in the paint again. I always keep plenty of paint on my brush. Push down, lift up, it's all about the pressure you're applying. And so instead of doing this upstroke right here, I'm gonna go ahead and skip straight to that next part of the R, just because I felt like it. And then I'll go back and do that stroke there. So, so even though that's considered an upstroke, sometimes it's easier with your brush to use a downward stroke with a light touch, just because you might have more control. I personally, I always feel like I have more control when I'm pulling the brush toward my body. So doing a stroke going up to that R didn't feel like I would have as much control as if I was pulling it down. So that's why I chose to do that. And then apply pressure going down. And the beautiful thing about the chalk is that I don't have to stay on that chalk line. If I decide I got my two letters, my letters too close together, I can always deviate from that and um, erase the chalk later. Now I'm still using the size one. If you felt like this size wasn't large enough for whatever you were working on, you could always um, increase the size. But it's working pretty good for what I'm doing right now. So I stayed with it. Okay, so there's Mary and we did all of that with a size one round tip brush. You know, you guys could get out a piece of paper tomorrow and rewatch this video with a set of brushes and follow my steps exactly. And I guarantee you would be very surprised at your results. Like you would probably be very thrilled at how it came out. Okay, next let's do the Christmas lettering. Okay, so moving on to the next type of brushes, the Filbert tip, whoops, I've got a purple one in there. The Filbert tip brushes, these, like I said, are out of stock right now in my store, but we are gonna be getting some more in soon. If you wanted to get some round and some filbert and you only wanna buy one pack of brushes, try this set right here. These are available in my shop and we have some rounds and some filberts in that pack. Okay, so this comes with 12 different sizes as well. This is the size six. I use it a lot. As you can see, it's gotten left in the water a few times. Poor little brush. And then the size four gets used a lot as well for me. For some reason, those two sizes I, get, I use a lot. Um, and then this size two is pretty tiny for like little bitty lettering. Um, and I use it quite a bit as well. Okay, so on this particular design, we're gonna need to choose a, a brush that's not gonna be too fat. So lay your, lay your bristles down like this and then that's gonna tell you, okay, that's gonna be way too fat because then my letters are gonna bump into each other. So I'm not gonna use that one. And let's go to the smallest one and then compare. Okay, if I use that one, my letters are gonna be so skinny, they're not gonna look substantial enough to go along with my Mary lettering up there. So we're not gonna go with the smallest one either. So it's probably gonna be four, five, or six, to be honest with you. 
Um, let's look at the, um, the six first. That looks about right. If you put like push down when you're laying it down there and try to decide if you feel like that's too thick. I feel like it's almost too thick. So I'm going to go with the size four, I think, or where's the five? Here's the five. Let's do the five. Okay. So this is the size five filbert tip brush. And so I've decided that's about the size I want to go with. I'm dabbing in my watered down black paint that we've been using. And with this, it's pretty much just like writing with a pencil. The only problem you're going to have is that you're going to run out of paint as you go around. So re-dip in the paint as often as you can. <clears throat> and then for my little, uh, what do we call these, serifs, instead of laying my brush flat and doing it across, I'm going to hold it straight up and just draw a little line with the tips of my brush. So the trick with these is that when you're doing a brush stroke, and if these did not have serifs down at the bottom, so see how we have the little serifs, the little lines? For example, if we didn't have these little serifs, we might end up with some scraggly brush strokes down here at the bottom of our letter. So to prevent that, you're gonna take your brush, go around, keep pressing flat down till you get to the bottom of the letter, then lift straight up. Now I held it there a little too long, so mine got messed up. But that's how you're going to make those strokes have nice, clean edges. Now if you struggle in the beginning with having those strokes have nice, clean edges, put serifs on the ends of everything, and it kind of solves that problem. This, to me, is one of the fastest ways to do lettering with the filbert tip brushes, if you, um, because you don't have to worry about thickening down strokes or getting getting the pressure just right. You just have to pretty much write like you're writing, almost like you're writing with a pencil or a marker. So if you wanted to step your toe into the world of hand lettering with a brush, I would recommend starting with filbert tip brushes and doing whimsical lettering. That's gonna be your easiest entry point. And then as you become more comfortable with that, you could always up level to script hand lettering with a round tip brush. And just because I'm teaching it this way does not mean this is the only way to do it. If you figure out a different kind of brush or a different method that works good for you, by all means, do that. This is just what has worked for me. And that's what I always teach here on my page are techniques and things that have worked well for me. Um, and that's just what I teach because I think it'll work well for you as well. All right, there we go. Now, if we wanted to, we could get some white paint, mix it with just a tiny bit of our black and get one of our round tip brushes again. This time I've got a, where did I do with the size one? Did I rinse it out? Yeah, here it is. So the size one was the one that I used and I'm going to create like a really uh, light gray color with my white and black and we're just going to create a little highlight. You can do this with white also, but I feel like by adding a little bit of gray, it kind of makes it a little less harsh. It's a little bit more forgiving. And you're just gonna keep putting those little highlights in to accent the shapes of the letters. Mainly on the areas that you do the downstrokes on, if that makes sense, because those are the fatter areas. So if you wanna get any of these brushes, like I said, these round tip brushes are in my shop right now. The filbert tip brushes are out of stock, but they should be back very, very soon. If you wanna just jump straight to getting um, both, go grab these because these have a couple of different rounds, a couple of different filbert, and a couple of different flats. So they really are a good variety pack for you to get started with. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed these tips. All right, you guys have a great day. I will see you again soon.